Well, welcome everybody. The Lord bless you real good. Welcome to Old Testament Survey. This is uh, week five, lesson five. Let's get to work and let's receive what God has for us in this lesson today. Father, in the great name of Jesus, we give you glory and praise for this day. Thank you for your mighty and great anointing. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to speak into the lives of your lovely sheep. We pray in the name of the Lord that you will make your word clear and precise to us this today. Thank you, Lord God, that I'm anointed to teach. Your people are anointed to receive, and we all are anointed to leave this session and live out that which we will hear. In the name of the Lord, amen. Praise God. All right, let's get to work here today, and let's, um, let's get it in. Praise God. We are on our fifth lesson, the book of Numbers. Numbers. Uh, and I pray you are enjoying, you are receiving from God, and you're getting good understanding of the Bible. Along with the notes and outlines, uh, it'd be good if you go through and read the book. Um, and if not, at least the scriptures that we have here in the outline, you would take out the time and read it so you can acquaint yourself with um, what is going on in each, uh, each uh, book, each lesson, each story as we move through the history of the Israelite nation, the Hebrew nation. Okay, so now we're at the book of Numbers, Roman number one, its name. Numbers gets its name from the Greek name Arithmia, which in Latin is numeri. In English, it means numbers, numbers. Why is this so, insignif why is this so significant? It was so named because, uh, because in it the children of Israel are twice numbered in this book. Once at the beginning and again toward the end. They're moving through the wilderness, about to go into the promised land of Canaan. They are numbered. You remember they came, they went into Egypt. 70 strong, they came out 600,000 men strong, over 2 million people. Now they're moving through the wilderness. They get to Kardash Bernier. We're going to talk about that tonight, how they failed God, continually failed God. And a whole generation in this book, a whole generation of descendants and people die in the wilderness. They're numbered again as they get ready to go over into the promised land. Number two, the old Hebrew name was the in the wilderness, in the wilderness. You see that in verse one. Both names tell the story in the wilderness. Both stories tell, both stories tell. Both names tell the story in the what wilderness. It's uh, Roman number two. It's nature. What is the nature of this book? Numbers take up where Exodus leaves off. They're brought out of Egypt in the book of Exodus. They begin their so sojourney through the wilderness, going to the Canaan, to their promised land. They're given laws and precepts by which they were to govern their lives by and live by. They're given the Ten Commandments and they begin to outline all the um, particulars of how they were to conduct themselves, live their lives. And the book of Numbers picks up on that. Roman number two, it's nature. Number, numbers take up where Exodus le left off. Number one, just one month between the book, the two books. So it's only one month between the happenings and the recording of what happened in Egypt and the beginning of what? Numbers. With Levitical instructions coming in between. You can compare that if you read Exodus 40, verse 17, and Numbers one in one. You'll see there's only two, one month, one month of events uh, here. 
The census is taken. Number two, the people organize. The march begun to Canaan. God leads. Canaan is in sight. They can see it. They can smell it. They can feel it. They're close. Israel disbelieves and rebels. Judgment falls. When they disbelieve, when they failed God, it cost them. What was in sight, a three-day direct entrance into Canaan, a roundabout way because the Edomites wouldn't allow them to walk through their land, became an 11-day journey, turned into a 40-year wandering. Old generation dies out during this time because they kept failing God. He kept testing them and they kept failing. New generation is numbered, counted, to go into the land of what Canaan. So get that. Genesis, book of beginnings. Exodus, they go into, uh, well, at the end of Genesis, they go into Egypt, a, a suburb called what? Goshen. Hard taskmasters are placed on them. Uh, there arose a pharaoh that did not know the story of Jacob his Joseph the governor and his family coming into uh, Egypt they began to multiply and grow and now the population in Goshen is greater than the population of the whole government of Egypt there arose a Pharaoh that did not know the Israelites the Hebrews this story and they said, no, we cannot do this. These people are outnumber us. They're going to take over us. Let's do something about that. Here is a nation that is less than them put the nation that is greater than them in numbers in slavery. And after 400 years, God says, enough of this. You're coming out. I've heard the cry of, your, of my people. He brings them out. They sojourn. What's supposed to be a three-day journey and an 11-day journey turns into a 40 years wandering. How can you be right around the corner from your destination and it takes you 40 years going around in circles, round in circles, and you don't even know you're going round in circles, round in circles. Sin will make you, make you pay more than you're willing to pay. It will keep you longer than you want to be kept. It will take you places that you don't even want to go. And here are these people walking around in circles for 40. How can you walk around in circles for 40 years and no one says, hey, we've been walking around the same mountain for 40 years. It's importance, uh, number three. Its importance referred to and referred to in New Testament again and again. Number one, read in detail 1 Corinthians 10 verses 12 and make notes on your readings. Hebrews 3 7 uh, through 19. You see all of what I'm saying right now, their journey through the wilderness 40 years is backed up in these scriptures. Number four, it's structure. It is a book of movement by the people. It's a book of movement by the people. They're moving, sojourning through the wilderness into the promised land that God promised them in the book of Genesis from the beginning. Okay? It deals with two different generations because of their sin and their apostasy. There is a generation because of their disbelief, there's a generation that dies in the wilderness. There's so many significant things, spiritual edification things that are going on in this book that we need to take a look at so we won't repeat the same mistakes in this day of grace. This is a story that you want to look at, you want to read. Because this is this typifies the book of Numbers really typifies things that are going on even in our day, in this century, in this hour. Because they kept failing God, you're on your way somewhere, and it only takes three days to get there on foot. 
So if it took three days for them to get there on foot, man, you can get in the car and get there maybe in um, an hour. Now, not even an hour, maybe, yeah, maybe 45 minutes to an hour or so. We have to multiply, uh, test that out. Not long to get there, but it takes them now 40 years to get there. How can you be that close to your blessing, that close to your breakthrough, that close to the dawning of a new day for you? And because of your unbelief, your disbelief, your trying of God and playing with the things of God, where you should have been at 23, now you're 53 and you're still struggling. You still haven't gotten there yet. This is a vital message, a vital lesson, a vital book that you might want to go back and take a look at. Read. Thus the structure is, number two, the old generation, chapters one through 14, the wandering transition era, chapters 15 through 20, and the new generation, their children and their grandchildren that were born during this 40 year period. They are the ones now that will go into the promised land. Are you going into the promised land? Are you gonna enter into the promises of God that he has outlined for your life? Will you enjoy and see the inheritance that God has for you? Can I say this to you all? If you're not enjoying your walk with God, evidently you're doing it wrong. This is a rewarding walk. Your relationship with God is a rewarding, I mean enjoyable walk with God. Here they are, they're walking, and if they had just walked with God and obeyed him and do what he said and the commandments and the laws and the statutes that he gave them the way to God and the walk with God, we read and learned about in the book of Leviticus, if they had followed those things and those precepts that he'd given them, my God, they would have been enjoying the land instead of walking. And God still, we'll read it in here, and God still covered them, even in 40 years, because he loved them. God will cover you even when you make a mistake, even in your downtime. It does not disqualify you from the blessings of God, but you don't ultimately get to where he wants you to be. You may not be enjoying all the fullness of the glory that you should be by your obedience, but God will cover you as it is. Remember in numbers, remember in numbers, number three, remember in numbers, two generations. So we have two generations here, chapter, chapters 1 through 14 and 21 through 36. The two numberings, chapters 1 through 4 and chapters 26 through what, 27. The journeys, chapters 10 to 14, 21, 27. Please, people of God. Know when you're just going in circles and you're not progressing. No, men and women of God, we don't want to just be moving people around. We want to be moving and teaching and promoting them to go forward, pushing them forward in the things of God. Two instructions, D, chapters 5 through 9, chapters 28 through what, 36. This is very important that you get this lesson. It's central message. What is the central message of the book of Numbers? Like we have a central message of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Leviticus, there's a central message that goes with the book of Numbers. And it is guidance, direction by the Lord God. Vitally important. John 14, 6, chapters 8, 12. And deliverance. Numbers 10, 29. And Numbers 21, Verses 6 through what 9. And so let's look at the story that I've outlined in the last 15 minutes. Roman number 6. The old generations. Chapters 1 through 16. And this scene is taken from their march from Sinai. Mount Sinai. Where they got the law. The commandments. All the instructions of how they were to live their life to Kardashian. Barnea, 
the place where they are going to get ready, prepare themselves to cross over into the promised land. This is the history of the Israelites. This is the history of God's chosen people, the Hebrew nation. A, the numbering, chapters 1 through 4. You'll read good, good, good things in chapters 1 through 4. Chapter 1, numbering of adults, male. So they were numbered. Chapter 2, we deal with the distribution of the tribes. They were given a tabernacle to erect. And there was, there was a placement for them situated around the tabernacle. They had a portion, they had a place that their, their family, their tribes would set up tent. Everything was organized in the Bible. Distribution of tribes. And number three, chapter three, numbering of Levite, Levite males and priests. Everybody had their portion around the tabernacle. The priests, the Levites, God said, you shall be mine. You won't have a placement. You won't have a certain a certain placement. You will be my possession. I will provide for you. I will be your placement. Chapter 4, distribution of Levites' duties. So they had duties. The numbering census was for military purposes. Each of the 12 tribes were numbered and assigned a position, like I said, around the tabernacle. Chapter 3 gives the census of the tribe of Levi. Dash, uh, uh, they were exempt. Even, God said, you are my people. I am going to even exempt you from the numbering. You will not be in this, what, census. They were priests set apart to serve God and care for the tabernacle. So there were different instructions for this one tribe, the tribe of Levi. And you know, if you go back to um, Exodus and uh, Leviticus, you see and you know the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob, of Joseph, excuse me. Uh, letter E, chapters uh, 3, 38 tells the position of Moses, Aaron, and his what sons? B, the instructing. Chapters 5 through chapters 10, verse 10. The first four chapters dealt with the outward formation of the camp. These five chapters deals with the inward condition of the camp. Chapter 5 deals with the purity, honesty, and truth. They were situated, if I can give you a diagram, or you can see the tabernacle. And around the tabernacle, tribes were to assemble. And this, these chapters, they give the instructions on their placement, their formation, and then he deals with purity, honesty, truth, how they were to live their lives. And if they sin, what offerings they brought into the, to the gate, to the uh, opening of the what? tabernacle. If they just want, God, you've been good to me, and I just want to give you a peace offering, a blessing offering. The sacrifices that they would bring, the animals they would bring, the dove, the turtle dove, and on and on. The ram for sin, whatever, to the tabernacle to offer unto the Lord for their family, of, that they would be sustained. Okay, number two, chapter six, the vows of the Nazarites, meaning total separation unto the Lord. So the Levites, and then there were Nazarites. These Nazarene, we understand that through uh, Samson, he was uh, of the family of the Nazarites and their vows that they had to take. Vows of the men, of the males, never to have their hair cut. And on and on and on. Read that in chapter 6. Chapter 7, we see the free will offering of leaders of each tribe. The Lord recorded the offerings. You remember in Mark 12, 41 and 44, Jesus sat on and he watched them what give. Chapter 8, number 4, chapter 8, describes the consecration of Levites. 
how they were to be consecrated, how they were to be washed, and how the garments that they were supposed to wear. Chapter 9 shows the people keeping the Passover and, tell, and tells us of the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by what night. This indicated the guidance of the Lord. Don't forget the Passover was a memorial of past deliverance. The Bible is not hard to understand. The Old Testament tells about the history of the Hebrew nation and all the stories, all the workings of God in the lives of the Hebrew nation. It is God's written revelation of his will to man before Christ. And everything that happened in the first 17 books of the Bible is the history of the Hebrew nation. And it covers everything else, all the other books in the Old Testament. The next five books of the Bible, starting with Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, all those events happen during the history of the Bible, the first 17 books, all the major prophets and the minor prophets that goes after, comes after the uh, poetry books, all the events of those happen during that first 17 books of the Bible, uh, history books, all, everything that happened after, after what, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, all those things happen the, pro, the poetry books, the prophetic books, all of that happened during the history time. So that's the whole, whole Old Testament. Now you move into the New Testament and you come start, it starts with the birth of Jesus Christ and the birth of the church in the book of Acts and everything that happened and all the epistles get their roots during the Acts of the Apostle time of, or the um, birthing of the churches and how the gospel spread all over the earth. The, the Bible is not hard to understand. The structure is not hard to understand. Like we're breaking down the structure of the, uh, the book of Numbers. So we got it. We got it. We got it. We're at um, number five. Let's just read that again. Number five, chapter nine, shows the people keeping the Passover and tells us of the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night. That's vitally important. This is how God led the Israelites through that wilderness experience. And what was supposed to be a three-day turn, a three-day journey, turned into an 11-day journey, which turned into a 40-year journey. God led them the entire time. He led them during the day, by a pull of cloud so the sun would not scorch them. God took care of these people. He provided for them. Gave them water. Made the water sweet. And when water was not enough, he gave them manna, bread, every day for six days. On the sixth day, he gave them enough for two days because they weren't to go out and gather on the seventh day. How can God bless you? Who so much that he'll bless you in advance? That on my day, you don't have to do anything. It'll be provided for you. Amen? It'll be provided for you. Um, when manna was not enough, he gave them, he gave them quail. He gave them meat. He provided for the Israelites and they kept failing him. And he did it miraculously. Nothing God does is normal. Everything he did for them in their face was miraculously. Who can imagine a man tapping a rock, hitting a rock, a rock, and water start, an everlasting fountain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Barakiso, halaboko rabasha. An everlasting fountain flow of water out of a rock. That rock represents Jesus. Out of him flows water, nutrients for us on a daily, hourly, 
minute by minute basis. You're never without support. You're never without nutrition. The word of God keeps coming. The word of God keeps coming. They had water and he made the water sweet. Good drinking water. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still good drinking water. Thank you, Jesus, for evermore. Thank you, Jesus. He took care of them. Letter A, he led them by a pillar of cloud by day so the sun would not scorch them. And when he was ready for them to move at night, if they saw that cloud moving, that meant pack your tents, pack up your, your temporary housing, everybody get in line and start moving. When the cloud moved, they moved. At night, in the middle of the night, he led them by fire. All of a sudden at night, the skies lit up. They saw that fire and that fire began to move so slowly. Proceed before them. They knew to pack up their tents, get their children together, get their families together, get all their personal belongings together and start sojourning, journeying, following him. This indicated the guidance of the Lord. That's how we are to be guided. Where's the, where's the, where's the cloud leading you? Where's the glory cloud leading you? Where's that glory fire leading you? When God speaks on the inside of you. When you have a knowing, a prompting on the inside of you, a dream, and you know it's from God leading you to do X, Y, and Z, leading you to go somewhere, leading you to give something. Everything about your life, everything about a Holy Ghost filled child of God's life should be based in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14 and verse 16. For they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are y'all getting this? Are you getting this? This indicated the guidance of the Lord. Bottom of page 23b, don't forget the Passover was a memorial of past what deliverance. So every year they would observe, like we read in the book of Leviticus, they would observe the Passover. Remember how I brought you out of Egypt, the Passover, the last plague, the death of the firstborn son of in the land. And how he said, put, get a link to it, dip it in blood, put it on the doorpost of the house. And everywhere I see the blood, I'm going to pass over that house. And the, the firstborn son, he will not die. Go to the top of page 24. The Lord's Supper is a memorial for us of, the, of deliverance from sin through, through Christ. 1 Corinthians we see that in 1 Corinthians 11, 26. Number 6, chapter 10, verse 1 through, through 10. You will read, if you, if you read, the Lord commands Moses to make two trumpets for calling the assembly. So when that cloud, A, when the pillar of cloud gave guidance for the eye, while the trumpets gave guidance for the ear, the cloud gave guidance for the eye. I'm moving. Get up. The trumpet gave guidance to the ear. When you when you hear that trumpet, everybody get up. Start packing up your belongings. Belongings. Let's start moving. Because I'm protecting you. You don't know why I'm causing you to move right now in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, at certain times, whenever, of the week, the month. But when I say move, let's move. I'm protecting you from something. I'm preparing you for something. I'm shielding you from something. I'm telling y'all, people of God, when you when, when you sense the moving of the Holy Spirit, the uh, leading of the Holy Spirit, move with him. You don't know what he's protecting you from. You don't know what he's leading you to. You don't know what blessing he has for you that he wants you to encounter during the day. If you would just follow, get up. Go to the store now. Go to the uh, car dealership now. You don't know what he has prepared for you, but you just got to follow him, follow his what lead. Amen. Glory to God. The journey. Let us see. The journey. 
chapters 10, verse 11 through chapter 14. Chapter 10, verse 11, they had been at, at Sinai getting ready for the march to, toward Canaan. They're leaving the mountain, the giving of the laws, the precepts, the instructions of how they were to govern themselves, and now they're getting ready to march toward the uh, promised land. Now the pillar of cloud lifts, just like the cloud we see when it begins to rain, clouds in the sky today, right now, it lifts and it begins to move. The trumpet sound is sound. And the whole camp moves. When God speaks, when God moves, you move. Settle it in your spirit only to hear from God. Only do what you know and you sense God leading you to do. And a good way to know that is to run it through spiritual counsels, spiritual mentors. Well, I think I heard God run it past someone you can trust that you know do hear from God. Does it agree with the word of God? Is it a burning in your spirit, not something in your head? I just got an idea. I'm going to go out here and try to do that. No, you better hear from God and you better know you're hearing from God. And if you're not sure that you're hearing from God, run it through someone that is spiritually inclined, educated in the things of God. It'll agree in their spirit. They will give witness to it. If that's what is needed concerning whatever venture thing you get ready to do. Chapter number two, chapter 11 through 14, find the people moving toward the promised land. And after three days, they begin to, listen to this, listen to this. One month between, ooh, glory to God, the Exodus and the book of Numbers getting ready to move into the promised land. They begin to move. The cloud lifts, begins to move, and they begin to follow the cloud. The cloud, by the, Cloud by day, fire by night. They began to move, walking. They used to this. They've been doing this since they left Egypt, going through the Red Sea, crossed over the Red Sea, and that cloud now is there to move and direct them further. After, th please underline that, three days, they begin to murmur and complain. How soon? Do you forget? How soon are you distracted? You get a word on Sunday. You come to a service. You get a word on Tuesday evening. How soon is it that you leave off, forget, go back on that one message you heard? The message of faith, the message of healing, the message of holiness, the message of integrity, whatever you've heard. How long do you contain, retain what you hear? Learn from the story. Even Aaron, look at this now, even Aaron and Miriam becomes jealous of their brother Moses. At Kadesh Barnea, they displayed their sinfulness and unbelief. They sent 12 spies to search out the land and 10 came back with a negative report. I don't need no spies. I don't need you to go out and check out what God, God, what I have promised you, what I said going to happen. If I tell you to do it, you don't have to go check it out. And when you go against God and go against his will and his mind, and you're trying to figure out and trying to do it on your own, look what happened. Ten of the twelve came back with negative reports. God said, this is your land. He said that from Genesis. This is a promise he gave Abraham. The twelve the 12 Abrahamic covenants that I'm going to give you your own land. They were wanderers. They were nomads. And God says, I'm going to take you from that nomadic era and I'm going to plant you, place you in your own land. Yes, the land may be previously owned by another, another people, but I'm going to take it from them and give it to you. God is a sovereign God. Trust me. No, we can't trust you. We, we don't believe this. Moses went up on the uh, mount to receive the uh, Ten Commandments, 40 days. What we happened to that Moses? He's he been going too long. Maybe he's dead up on that mountain 
And we ain't going up on that mountain to find him because God is up there. Let's just build us a calf. Let's just build us a God and we will worship him. Moses came back down and saw them worshiping the idol, idol calf, the idol God. He throws down the, the, uh, the tablets. He goes back up again. Destroy their God. Their, their you know, their constructed what? Calf God. He goes back up again, receives the Ten, Ten Commandments and came, delivered to the people and began to expound and tell them how they were to live their lives as an organized nation. Same thing here. Three days, they're complaining. They get to Kadesh Barnea. We ain't believing. Let's, let's do it our way. We're smarter than God. Let's send 12 spies out. Go spy out the land. Only two, only two, only two, Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up and possess the land. Yes, full of grapes and honey and they got abundance of everything. God could not want that for me. You receive a prophecy. You hear the word of God preach that it delights God to prosper you. He couldn't be talking about me. I've been struggling all my life. That couldn't happen for me. No, no, no. You send out natural, fleshly spies. God said what he's going to do. God said what's going to get ready to happen. And you just do not want to believe him. Believe God. Settle it. Whatever he says, whatever he has for me, I receive it. I receive it by faith. It is happening in my life. Start releasing your faith for the visible manifestation of that thing. Hallelujah. And walk on into the expectation of it. They sent these spies. Only two came back with a positive report. The crowd would not believe. And because of your unbelief, my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge, because of unbelief. All things are possible to him that what believe. Nothing is impossible to him that what believe. Your unbelief causes retardation. It causes stagnation in your life. Because they would not believe, judgment fell. Judgment falls in the form of 40 years wandering. Read that in uh, Numbers 14, uh, verses 29 to 33. They began to wander. Three days into the journey. Three days. They were right there. You cross over this hill, this mountain, boom. This Canaan land. This Canaan land. Evidently, the 12 went over there. They got there. They know the direction how to get there. But because of their unbelief, because of their unbelief, everyone is confused, like in Nimrod. Everyone is confused. And now they begin to journey. Oh, we're going to the land. We're, going, we're on our way. Let's move. We're on our way. But instead of going directly to the land, God had them to wander around a mountain for 40 years. And nobody looked and said, that's the same mountain. We've been on this road before. We've, been, we've done this before. We've tried this before, and it did not work. And what consequently happens, a whole generation dies. People of God, don't be a part of that generation that just will not obey God, will not believe God. And God has to raise up your sons, your daughters, your grands to fulfill his will in the earth. Believe him, trust him, live for him, obey him, follow him. This story of numbers is vitally important, people of God. I'm not screaming. I'm not yelling at you in this. I want you to learn this. This book of numbers is significant for even us, the New Testament church. 
it admonishes us to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. The, the theme of this book, guidance, direction by the Lord God, deliverance. God will deliver you and get you out, but you got to follow him. Roman number seven, the, wild, the wilderness wandering. You see them wandering, chapters 15 through 20. In this section is the tra uh, transition from the old to the new generation. With the exception of Joshua and Caleb, the Lord told the people they would die chapter 14, 29, and that their children would go into the land because you would not believe me. For all those years, they wandered, listen to this highlight this, they wandered and finally came to the same spot where they had been, Kadash Barnea, the same spot you did not believe me, the same spot you failed me, the same test, the same temptation, you end up right there but with a new group of people. Let me see if y'all going to trust me. Let me see if y'all going to believe me. I did that last week. I did that last year. I done tried this five times. And it, you come back to the same test. You're going to have to pass this test. Bishop Kenneth Coward preached a message years ago. Don't strike out in your tests. You're going to keep going over this thing until you pass this test. That's the only way you're going to get from home plate to first base, from first base to second, from second to third to get home. You got to pass the test. Count it all joy when you are tested, fall into divers test temptations, knowing that the working of your faith work of what? On and on and on. Number three, God continued to communicate with them through Moses during this time. You read that in chapters 15, 1, 17, 35. He gave them food and water, clothes and shoes, Deuteronomy. We see that in chapters 8, 2 through 6. In chapter 16 through 18 comes an attack on the era, on the era of uh, Aaron's family, the priesthood, on the priesthood, and over 15,000 die in an earthquake, fire, and plague. Then God caused the rod of, of Aaron to what blossom, showing his approval of the office. Men of God, you don't have to play tricks games. God will validate you. Pastors, you don't have to prove, I'm the head, I'm the head, obey me, oh, listen to me, listen to me. God will validate you. The budding of the rod speaks of Christ, our high priest, and on his resurrection. Read that, you need to read that. In Hebrews 4 and 14, uh, Hebrews 5, uh, 4 through 10. But read that chapters. Read those chapters. Number five, chapter 20. We see the death of Miriam and the sin of Moses when he smote the rock twice. And God told, when God told him just to speak to it. The second time, God told him, the first time, smite the rock. Smite the rock. And water gushed out. The second time, they were begging and complaining for water again. And he said to him, speak to the rock. Same situation, different methods. So don't marry a method in ministry, in your life, in your spiritual life. God will do it one way this time. He'll manifest what you believe in him for another way the next time. But you got to learn to trust God and do it his way every time. Boy, this is some good, good, good stuff that you can glean some good lessons from in this book. Okay? 
Because Moses did not believe the Lord, he would not go into the land. Because he failed God, and at one instance, God said, speak to the rock, do not spite it. Because the rock represents Jesus, so you cannot spite, you cannot smite, you cannot hit Jesus. Be careful how you how you handle the word of God. Preachers, ministers of the gospel, saints, children of God, be careful how you handle the gospel. Be very careful how you represent Jesus because this one sin, he messed up one time and God said, you will not go into the land. What? You know, Testament, this is judgment. This ain't no hour of grace. This is judgment. You miss it, you pay, period. Next page, verse 25, Aaron dies. The Levite dies. Roman number eight, the new generation comes up. You see what happens in the new generation, chapter 21 through 36, they get ready to go into the promised land from Kadesh Barnea to Moab. The delay is over. The old generation is gone and the new generation has arisen. The new journey. Chapters 21 through 25. The journey was made longer because, you remember I said this at the beginning, Edom refused to let them go through their land. Chapters 21, 14 through 22. Chapters 21, verse 4. Note the lesson of the spirit and murmuring again. And God sends the serpent this time. Okay. No, you can't go through our land. So what was a straight shot journey now becomes a roundabout way that you have to walk. Sin. Sin will make you pay what you cannot afford. It will keep you longer than you want to be kept. It will, it will lead you places that you don't want to go. A roundabout way that you should not have to go. Trust God. Believe God. Obey God, are y'all getting this? Letter D. Okay, letter C. God provides a way to be saved. In all your temptation, there is a way of escape. God still gives them a way of escape. D, chapters 22 through 25, the confrontation between uh, with uh, what? Balaam. That's good read. That's good read. Come, come curse these people. And every time he opened his mouth at the end, he blessed him. Come, and the donkey he's riding on Keep stumbling and keep throwing him off. And he's beating the donkey. He's beating the donkey. Come on, obey me. Take me where I want to go. And before the donkey, the donkey is seeing what he's not seeing. Flames, swords, flames of fire. I, I am not walking through that. Beat me all you want to. I'm not walking through that. And finally, God opens the mouth of the donkey. He said, why are you harming me? I'm saving your life. You cannot do what God has not commanded you to do. You can't curse what God has blessed. Read it. What is some good reading, man? Oh, Bible's good reading. Number three, the new numbering. So they're numbered again in chapters 26 through uh, 27. At the beginning of the 40 years, they were about 600,000 men. And at the beginning of the 40 years, uh, they were at the, at the beginning, after, <clears throat> at the end of the 40 years, they were about what? 40,000. I mean, excuse me, 600,000. No growth. Sin. Wandering. No growth. Number five. The chapter in chapter 27, verse uh, 12 through 14. Moses is told of his impending death. And then Joshua is appointed. So now we get Joshua is appoint, appointed in his what place? So Joshua, Joshua becomes the leader of the children of Israel. That's going forward. The new instructing, chapters uh, 28 through 36, chapter 28 through 29, offerings to be given to the Lord. Chapter 30, the vows of men and women. Chapter 31, avenge the children of Israel against the Midianites. Not one Hebrew in this 
story, if you read chapter 31, uh, not one was lost. When God sends his judgment, he will judge those. He will use a nation to check Israel and then judge them for touching them in the first place. He's a sovereign God. And in Goshen, not one, not one Israelite, the firstborn died. All the plagues that happen in the book of Exodus, none of them affect Goshen right there in a the suburb, right next door to them. The flies, the bees, the, the blood, the streams turning to blood, everything that was going on in Egypt to judge them for not letting God's people go. Israel and Goshen was not touched by it. We are not supposed to be, we are not to suffer with what the world is suffering from. Claim that in the name of Jesus. Claim it in the name of Jesus. God, you build a wall of protection around me. I am not to suffer with what the world is suffering with and through. I am not, no, 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 no. I have a message. I have a ministry of exemption over my life. I'm exempt. We are exempt. Hey, glory, hallelujah. 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 No, we're not. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but in our case, the Lord delivers them out of them all. Man born of a woman is, uh, you know, is a few days, and those few days are full of trouble, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Our case is different. What's supposed to kill somebody, one person won't kill you because you have a covenant with God. You got a praying mother. You got a praying grandparents. You got praying ancestors that have prayed over your life, a bloodline over you. I am still benefiting from the prayers of my grandparents, my leaders. Every time they laid hands on me, every time they made me, Get up 12 o'clock in, uh, in the morning, 12 a.m. for prayer, 11 p.m. for prayer, 12 o'clock noon. Come on, let's go to church. Monday through Friday, we had to go for 12 o'clock noon day prayer. Every time he went, everywhere he went, laying hands on us, praying for us, leading us, guiding us, all the time spent in the car, chauffeuring him around, and he's imparting knowledge into me, into us. We're still benefiting from that. We're still being blessed by that. Thank you, Lord, forevermore. Thank you, Lord, forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So you see here uh, uh, in number six, the new uh, instructing chapters 28 through 20, 38. Chapter 28 through 29, the offerings to be given to the Lord. Chapter 30, the vows of men and women. Chapter 31, the avenge of the children of Israel against the Midianites, not one Hebrew was lost. Verse 49, chapters 32 through 36, requests of Reuben, and Ge Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh to settle, look at this now, to settle on the east side of the Jordan. We're going into the promised land. Reuben, Gad, Manasseh says, no, we don't want to go over it. We don't want to go over the promised land. We had enough. Let's let us settle right on over here. Why settle outside of God's promises for your life? Every time you side with the devil, God says, live holy. I can't live holy. I got to drink. I got to cuss. I got to run around. I got to fornicate. I've got to commit adultery. My flesh is screaming for it. I'm going to stay right here on the outside of the promise. Why? Don't stay on the outside of the promise. Trust God. He said, prove me now herewith and see. Prove him. If this is my order for you, if this is my guidance for you, this is my will for you, prove me. Prove me. Enter into your promised land. Enter into my best for you. Holiness is God's best. Obedience is God's best. Following the leading of the Spirit is God's best. And they said, no, we don't. Mm -mm. Let us stay over here. 
Their place was inside Canaan, not just outside. The results are found and you see the results of your disobedience. All through the book of Numbers, you see the results of disobedience. Faith is not saying you believe God. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe him so as to commit him to perform his word in your life. When I say I believe God, obey him. What does he tell you to do? Giving like he tells you to give. Praying like he tells you to pray. Being faithful the way he tells you to be faithful. And you receive the promise. This is not myst mystical. Christendom serving God is not mystical. Your, your relationship with God is a walk with God. And as you walk with him, he leads you, he guides you, he protects you. If you're interested, there's a place on top for all of us if we are interested. You see the results in 1 Chronicles 5, 18 through 26. Underline that and I want y'all to read that. They chose, they chose from what they could see chapter 32, verse 1, instead of accepting the instructions of the Lord. We don't have enough. This is good for us. It ain't Canaan, ain't what Caleb and Joshua talking about. It's not all that they are putting it up to be, but we don't know what's on the other side. So, we know what they say, but we haven't seen it ourselves. This is good enough for us. Don't ever settle for just enough, just good enough. Go on into the promised land. Believe God, trust him, obey him, live for him, sell out to him. Give him everything. God will not take seconds from us. He will not take second, second, second who place with us. He wants all. It's all or nothing. Your disobedience has caused you problems, aches, trouble, struggles in your life. Don't blame it on God. Don't blame it on nobody else. Let's finish. Hallelujah. Number seven, the cities of refuge. We find that, cover that in ch chapters 35. Their number, verse six through eight, their purpose what was the a significance of they had in this time cities of refuge? One example, if a man kills another unintentionally, there was vast retributions for that. If he can get to one of these cities of refuge, then the family, the people of the person he killed, they cannot avenge. They cannot kill him. In Old Testament, it was blood for blood. Thumb for thumb, hand for hand. You cut my hand off, your hand was to be cut off. You stole from me, I was to, you die. Old Testament law, it was just straight judgment. You mess up, you paid up. We live in a day of grace where God forgives but if, just for say, oh, we were just wrestling and he hit his head and he died or something happens or they made a sin, they committed a sin or whatever. If they can get to one of these cities, there were cities arranged around the region. And if you can get to one of these cities of refuge, you would be secure and no one can come and make retributions on you. The city of Russia, you'd read chapter 35. This is good reading as well. It's significant for our lives. We have a refuge in God. We have a place that we can run. There's safety in God. The city of refuge, chapter 35, their number, their purpose, their distribution, their regulations, all covered in chapter 35. And finally, the book closes dealing with the security of the inheritance, which teaches of our eternal security in Jesus Christ. He has covered our past, our present, and assures our future. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the utterance of your word. We thank you for what you 
have said to us and all the lessons that are in this lesson, all the true nuggets we can pull and extract out of this lesson for us in our eternal lives. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Get your assignments in. You'll see attached. Get it in. Be blessed of God. We'll see you all uh, on Wednesday, next next, next uh, video. Be blessed of God. The Lord love you. I love you too.